Greetings, I am Hunter S. Sparrow, and welcome to Pirate's Month! What was seen as a half-baked idea, literally laughed at by audiences just from the poster and teaser, turned into one of Disney's biggest franchises. With five films in the lineup, one good and the others there, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies became even more iconic than the original iconic ride. To a point where instead of making the movies more like the ride, they made the ride more like the movies. They earned Johnny Depp an Academy Award nomination, made pirates cool at a time when honestly they were kind of at the height of annoyance, and allowed Disney to finally venture into PG-13 movies. I for one can't wait until we get some R-rated flicks in there. There's five flicks to get through and we're gonna do exactly that all this month. Isn't that right, Will Turner? I, Black Sparrow, is ready to set sail. You're not a sparrow. I am a sparrow. A black sparrow. Prove it. Black sparrows are black. Exactly. You're overqualified. Elizabeth, what should be done with him? Captain Tam Sparrow here. Savvy, savvy, and all that nautical talk. You're not savvy, I'm savvy. You're not savvy, I'm savvy. Savvy? Savvy? What? What? Cut! What the hell, man? You two are supposed to be Will and Elizabeth. Nobody wants to be Will and Elizabeth. The only person they remember is Jack Sparrow, and also sometimes the guy who's like Tim Curry, but he's not Tim Curry. Jeffrey Rush. That's the one. And it makes sense anyway. It shows how much people wanted to be Jack Sparrow when the film came out. And do terrible Jack Sparrow impressions, like Malcolm's here. Oh, come on. Will and Elizabeth were important too? They had so many classic lines, like... There's one about a corset, I think? Exactly! That classic line Will said. Elizabeth. Elizabeth said! Let's face it, the only reason people liked these movies was for Jack Sparrow. Now that's not true, as indicating people liked all the movies. You know what he means, though. The success was due to him. I still think there's more to it than that. And to prove it, I'm gonna play Will and Elizabeth, and I will let you two play Jack Sparrow. Wow. That's really big of you. No problem at all. I'm gonna go change in the costume to prove my point. Man, maybe he does have a point. Yeah, if he's willing to play both characters, which... How is he supposed to do that? I think the better question is, why is he locking the door? Come on, oh, Harry! Hey, why did you do this? No, it's all about me, mate. Oh, Drink up, me hearties. Your house! Released 20 years ago in 2003, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl exceeded almost everybody's expectations. I'm really not kidding when I say audiences thought this would be one of Disney's biggest blunders. I remember people passing by the poster saying, oh my god, are they really doing this? Even when the trailers came out, I heard people laughing at how ridiculous Johnny Depp looked and that Jerry Bruckheimer was producing. Are we supposed to take this seriously, I heard somebody ask? And as it turns out, not really. Despite being marketed as a badass action flick, Pirates had a really goofy sense of humor, helmed by the same team who penned Shrek, Aladdin, and other adventures that had a comedic edge. But on top of that, it also had a twisted side to it. Director Gore Verbinski clearly liked to work with a dark edge in his work, and with Disney saying they wanted to toughen up a little bit with their first PG-13 rating, Pirates turned out to be a good outlet for him. As for Depp, ES's performance did play a big part in the film's success, but I think we've seen he's not always the secret ingredient to a good film. I do think there's more to the series being a hit outside of just his iconic performance. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. This is- Hey! He's not even staying in costume! How the hell are you seeing me right now? We can't. Well, keep quiet until I'm done with the review. Well, we could still play Will and Elizabeth. That is so three minutes ago. Which in internet time is like three weeks. I'm moving on. Can we at least get food and water? Pirates don't talk. That's not a thing! This is Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Ooh, this film is too tough to have the Disney logo before it. I guess this was to show there's no more kid stuff, it's all adult now? Clearly? open with a ship sailing the sea when a crewman named Gibbs, played by the underrated Kevin McNally, tells a young Elizabeth Swan not to sing about pirates. Bad luck to be singing about pirates. It's bad luck to have a woman on board too. Even a miniature one. I remember that line being less eerie. She's with her father, Governor Swan, played by Jonathan Price. And I should point out this film has a weird way of calling back to other Disney films. Callbacks are everywhere in Disney flicks, and they're usually very clever because they work in some humor. But these are just... There. For example, he's dressed as Captain Hook. Why? Barbosa offers an apple that Elizabeth thinks is poisoned. Sure. And look, this guy's a Little Mermaid! A Little Mermaid flopped up on deck and told him the whole story. Yeah, they're more distracting than funny. Now the Kraken spat out a mermaid skeleton with red hair? That would be hilarious. Look, a boy! There's a boy in the water! 
Elizabeth sees a boy in the water and alerts the crew. Is it a Vigo Moltenson? No, it's an Orlando Blue. Ugh, throw him back. He's the only survivor of a shipwreck, and Elizabeth notices something he presumably stole from a Atreyu. Pirates. <laughs> no proof of that. It's probably an accident. Yeah, it was probably the wind. It's always the wind. The wind set the ship on fire. Cut to years later, as Elizabeth is now played by Kira Knightley, and the boy named Will grows up into Orlando Bloom. I have a gift for you. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it? Don't you think it'll look lovely on me? She's also introduced to a corset. Women in London must have learned not to breathe. <gasps> now, now, Mum, you don't need that rib. You've got plenty more. We're then introduced to Jack Sparrow, played by Johnny Depp, in what many have called one of the greatest character intros of all time. It's a great scene because this finally let people know after seeing all the ads where they make Sparrow look like a badass. Oh, he's supposed to look ridiculous. Depp worked hard at getting the look and actions of this character down, but sometimes a little too hard. While most people know he heard that pirates were the rock stars of their day, so he played them like Keith Richards, many don't know that while Verbinski said yes to almost all of Depp's costume choices, he drew the line at an artificial nose that would fall off every single time he sneezed. Yeah, I think something was definitely going on with Depp's nose when he recommended that. A ship like that. Makes this one here a bit superfluous, really. Apparently there's some sort of high-toned and fancy to-do up at the fort, eh? And like that, Russell Brand saw this performance and said, I can do that the rest of my life, but bad! While Commodore Norrington, played by Jack Davenport, starts proposing to Elizabeth, she passes out due to the tightness of the corset, resulting in Sparrow saving her. Will you be saving her then? I can't swim! I only don't paddle. He's discovered to be the famous outlaw, though, and immediately arrested. These are his, sir. A compass that doesn't point north. No, no, it only points to what your heart wants. Or whatever bullshit we make up in the next one, pretending we had these planned all along. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. I am the original hate-watching. He manages to escape, though, and works his way into Will Turner's smithy. He breaks his chains with a... Wheel. Hey, these people wrote cartoons, you're gonna get a cartoon. And he runs into Turner, who tries to stop his escape. Excellent form, but how's your footwork? If I step here... Very good. So I'm not gonna pretend the writing in this is spectacular. It is more clever than I think people give credit for. While it is at times a little exposition-y... You've seen a ship with black sail that's crewed by the devil. Who makes all these? I do! And I practice with them three hours a day! I've been prating on ships and settlements for near ten years. Adversary demands parlay. You can do them no harm blah, until blah, the parlay is blah. complete. There's a lot of information crammed into certain moments you might miss upon first viewing. Sparrow testing Turner's footwork is not only an excuse to have an action sequence, but it's also used to show how clever he is moving him closer towards the exit. Ta. When he pulls out the gun and Ali shows that he's a cheat, but also that he doesn't want to use it for certain reasons we'll discover later. But he will if he has to. He is still a cutthroat. Please move. No! This shot is not meant for you. A lot of scenes are like that, kind of doing two things at once. Sparrow is captured, though, as the film tries to remind you, oh yeah, this was based on a riot, right? The dog is never going to move. Excuse us if we haven't resigned ourselves to the gallows just yet. First time. Sparrow's former ship, the Black Pearl, arrives as the golden piece Elizabeth had called to them in the water. Okay, this is gonna sound like an odd comparison, but these pirates kind of remind me of the nuns from Sister Act. In that they really didn't have to give them that much personality, but you do appreciate that every single one feels unique. They could just cast it extras in these roles, but no, they went out of their way to cast character actors who really do leave an impression. I especially love this one guy who's obsessed with explosions. His crazy love for them is like a mix between Art the Clown and that weird bomber from The Tick. Bad is good, baby! Down with government! Also, seriously, what is this guy thinking answering the door? Candy cram. Oh, I think too happy. <laughs> Wait, how's he know it's hot if later they say they can't feel anything? In fact, how'd this guy get her king knocked with that pan? Darn, movie sucks now. I thought it was good until it was bad. Just to remind us, Sparrow doesn't get all the laughs. We know you're here, Poppet. We will find you, Poppet. Come on out, we're gonna play ninja. Okay, then, hey! 
Hello, Poppy. Parlay! They find Elizabeth, but she invokes the right of parlay, which means she can be taken to Captain Barbosa, played by Jeffrey Rush. And just like every role he's in, it looks like he's having a blast. I am here to negotiate the cessation of hostilities against Port Royal. There were a lot of long words in there, miss. We're not but humble pirates. Okay, so here's the thing about Will and Elizabeth in this. They are necessary characters to anchor credibility to all the goofiness going on. And in comparing the two, Elizabeth really isn't that bad. She clearly isn't trained as a fighter, so she has to use her wits to survive, and she is good at it. That bit of shine matters to us. Well, I suppose if it is worthless. She has enough charm and intelligence that I don't want to see anything bad happen to her. Will, on the other hand, is so goddamn boring. They've taken Elizabeth. We have to hunt them down. We must save her. And where do you propose we start? The water! A lot of this may come from Bloom wanted to play the role smooth and cool while Verbinski kept insisting he was supposed to be a dork. It's only sword fighting that he's supposed to excel at. Everything else about him is supposed to be out of place. And he's both too suave and too bland to be out of place. I am us! <laughs> yeah, is that really that funny? I feel like a Nicholas Holt, Tom Holland, or James McAvoy could pull this off with more comedy and personality. Bloom just looks like Legolas needs a bath. He doesn't leave much of an impact. With that said though, he's not awful. He has a cute moment here and there, and clearly he's supposed to be eye candy for younger viewers. But whenever there's a scene where he's the focus, I constantly have to remind myself, oh, this scene was in the movie? I totally forgot that despite seeing this several times. You were familiar with that ship, the Black Pearl? I heard of it. Thankfully, he teams up with Jack Sparrow, though, who agrees to help him save Elizabeth if he can help him escape and be captain once again of the Black Pearl. I feel like there's a lot of reasons that wouldn't work, but... Repeat to yourself, it's just a park attraction that's been turned into a movie. I should really just relax. They take command of a ship, and Norrington chases after them. Search every cabin, every hole, down to the Belgians. Be sure to bring every last man on board. All eggs in this basket. It's Dark Knight Rises rules here. Of course, Jack and Will take over the other ship and sail off with it, having destroyed the ship they left over as cannons and rudder. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. Well, maybe it's just because you suck balls. He's the greatest pirate we've ever seen. Will finds out that his father named Bootstrap Bill was indeed a pirate, much to his letdown. Good man. Good pirate. I swear you look just like him. Yes, they're practically identical. Again, all planned from the beginning. They travel to pick up his friend Gibbs as well as a crew at a place that seems to love and hate him at the same time. Not sure I deserve that. Seems like the Deb Hurt trial in a nutshell. Meanwhile, Elizabeth lies about her last name, saying it's Turner. So they don't know she's the governor's daughter, but rather they're under the impression that she's Bootstrap Bill's child. There's no need to stand on ceremony. You must be hungry. Jesus, you pig! This is Aztec gold. A terrible curse. Why is it every moment he's on screen, I want him to sing, I'm reviewing the situation? <laughs> Wow, he actually said, "Ah." I'm not sure why I assumed this movie wouldn't have him do that, but it's strange to see for some reason. Arr. It wasn't even prompted. Couldn't he have at least been like, sorry, it's talk like a pirate day. We needed a break from our usual talk like a board office worker ritual. She discovers, though, he's working with a skeleton crew who can't die or feel anything because they're cursed. But returning the gold they stole along with her blood will lift it. Look, the moonlight shows us for what we really are. I'm sure I said this before, but anything supernatural that has a blank leads to blank, I usually love. Pour water on a sea creature and they're revealed. Sun rises and gargoyles turn to stone. And yeah, moonbeams revealing ghost pirates is pretty damn awesome. In my opinion, it's the most fun and creative thing in the movie. I just love it. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. And spoilers, we do make random sounds so that ghost hunters can go, what was that? Jack and Will acquire themselves a crew, including Zoe Zeldana? You stole my boat. You'll get another one. I will. 
I don't need this. I have like five green screens to be in front of tomorrow. The ship sets sail and Gibbs tells Turner about how Jack had his ship taken away by Barbosa and marooned him on a desert island. But not before he'd gone mad with the heat. So that's the reason for all the... That's a great impression of everybody's impression of him. They get to the treasure where they return the coin along with Elizabeth's blood, but they don't know if it worked. How do we tell? Do I need a joke for everything? Can't that just be funny? Parlay! Damn to the depths, whatever mutton they thought of Parlay! That would be the French. Ah, the French. Will and Elizabeth escape, but Jack gets captured and he tells him why Elizabeth's blood didn't work. Kill him. The girl's blood didn't work, did it? Hold your fire! Despite only having a few scenes together, I instantly believe the rivalry between these two. Whenever they talk, it genuinely feels like they've known each other for years, and they love getting under each other's skin, so to speak. You know whose blood we need. I know whose blood you need. Jack tells him where to locate the ship, but Elizabeth has a plan of attack. Look at the anchor on the right side. On the starboard side! It certainly has the element of surprise. Cannons are fired, eyes are forked up, and Jack escapes just to get captured again. Yeah, he's basically the hot solo of this series, a smuggler who always has to be saved, even in between movies. How's that plan working out, Elizabeth? You definitely got some brains, but a pirate's life ain't for you. Oh, I mean, it's what we were always building up the whole time! You know, all the bad stuff really is in the sequels, isn't it? Monkey. It's weird. For some reason, I don't think monkeys are funny, but people saying the word monkey is goddamn hilarious. You took advantage of our hospitality last time. Now you return the favor. <laughs> She goes free! Will says his blood is what they need to lift the curse and forces them to let Elizabeth and Jack go. They do so, but abandon them on the same island Jack was marooned before. I'd be having that dress back before you get them. <laughs> goes with your black heart. It's purple. That be the same little island that we made you governor of on our last little trip. Perhaps she will be able to conjure up another miraculous escape. Yeah, why are you putting him back in the place he got out of again? Isn't that kind of like... Aw. Oh, well, I know how to solve this. Aw. Oh. Jack admits it was pure luck how he got off the island before, but Elizabeth pretends to flirt with him and get him drunk so that she can set the island ablaze. Well, the devil's look at you, we're really badly. We got the hottest show hope. Sings about as well as he did in Sweeney Todd. Elizabeth's plan works as they're noticed by Norrington's ship and picked up. Jack has yet another way to weasel his way into an opportunity, though. Think about it. The Black Pearl. You will accompany these fine men to the helm and provide us with a bearing to Ila de Muerta. Why do people keep listening to him? Good, Good question. question. Pirates don't talk. Norrington agrees to let Jack help them capture the Pearl and save Will. Jack, it's not possible. How did you escape from the place you escaped before? We were so careful to do the same thing! Jack tells him about Norrington's ship outside and once again gets in their good graces. This is, of course, a quintuple cross as Jack frees Will while the other pirates attack the ship. And as fun as the sword fighting is, I will admit, my favorite stuff is just Jonathan Price fighting this evil dead hand. It's such a weird thing to keep cutting back to during this big battle, and I love it. <laughs> Jack steals a gold piece as well and ends up being cursed. I honestly don't have many notes about this climax. Fighting in and out of the moonlight is cool. This weird thing where they put a bomb in a guy's stomach is cool. You like pain? <gasps> Try wearing a corset. That line's a little lame, but overall the finale's pretty fun. Oh. Jack uses the bullet he's been saving for years to kill Barbosa, just as Turner returns the coin with his blood. I feel... cold. Okay, so this is admittedly a weird complaint, but for years I always thought he said, I feel old, when really he said, I feel cold. I think I feel old is a better line. I just love he would feel that as he gets feeling back and begins to die. If only the writers could be as smart as my terrible hearing. The pirates go back to normal and Verbinski on his commentary track said, this is when you realize the movie was actually kind of about something. And it sounds weird, but I know what he's talking about. 
These pirates spent so long trying to get this curse lifted to stop being invincible, and now that's gone, everything else they know is about to be taken away. No words, no hammered in symbolism, just a good quiet moment that lets it all sink in. It's a solid scene. Once again though, Jack is captured and about to be executed, but fear not, Will helps him escape with... a rope! Really don't think it's gonna do much. Did any guard train for anything in this? Is someone gonna be like, look, salt? But it's cool, Elizabeth says she loves Will and not Norrington, so that convinces him to let Jack go. What about Sparrow? Well, I think we can afford to give him one day's head start. I love the look on this guy, like he's saying, has everyone just gone friggin' insane? We were literally just stopped by a rope. We cannot afford to give him a day's head start. Elizabeth, it would never have worked between us, darling. Ah, uh, what a silly idea we tease for two more movies. Drink up, me hearty Joho. And that was Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Not perfect, but a damn good time. This is the definition of a turn your brain off movie, which is not to say a lot of people didn't need to use their brains while making it. Everyone gives the impression they're having a good time on screen. Even the ones that are a little dull still look like in a weird way they're having fun being dull. It's gonna have varying degrees of believable and unbelievable, and though often cartoony, there is a bit of an edge that's welcomed with that PG-13 rating. For a film any thought would be dead on arrival, you feel the effort of everyone trying to make something odd and unique. It's a good start to a good... It's a good start. And like I said, Jack Sparrow took off and everybody wanted to be him. To death. Oh, you two died? I was only away 20 minutes. Yeah, but in internet time, that's an eternity. Also, there's the curse of the studio. Oh, you mean you have to walk the earth for all eternity feeling nothing? No, no, we just really want mixed spaghetti from McDonald's. Oh. I never even had mixed spaghetti. It's terrible. But I want it. They discontinued it because it was so terrible. But I want it. And I hate that I want it. Come on, let's go hit ourselves in silence. Huh. Pirates Month has just begun! <laughs>